I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about the bazooka. Uh, I did do a... Uh, we had to block out the light. That was tense. Dropped it once. I thought I was going to have to re tell you how to repair the bazooka. But I, I, I'll call this getting a bazooka for dummies because it's, it's really a very complicated thing. But when you pick up a bazooka and you're going to... Um, and you're going to use it for the very first time. This little trap door right here is what you always have to remember. This is the probably one of the most important things about the bazooka. This bazooka is designed that when I close this door like this, it disengages the cable that's inside so, so this can run freely. The minute I engage this, the minute I engage this cable, Hang on, let me unwind the cable a little bit. But the minute I engage this cable, now it's this is what's winding the cable up. So when it gets to a certain point, this thing pushes up like this, it disengages the cable again, and the cable again is disengaged, so that this can spin freely. The biggest problem I've always had with a gun when I first started running it is when I put it on the bazooka pump, to fill it, you know what, let me grab a bazooka pump. So when I put it on the bazooka pump to fill it up, I didn't close the trap door. So the mud just pumps out all over the floor. So then you gotta, oops, clean up the mess, close the trap door, put this back on here, and then as you pump it with, the, with that trap door closed, this tube fills up with mud. You stick your finger in here, when your finger hits, when the stopper hits your finger, you know you're full, you take it, you engage the cable that's in here by flipping this up, and now this, as you, as you roll this, this spins, which forces the mud out. Now sometimes mud starts pouring out here because, because you might have got a, a chunk of mud inside here or something, so the little stopper is open a little bit so sometimes you're running it it's good to, to before you even get started make sure that this is oiled well a lot of times I stick my finger in there if it's running out badly or I'll take a little screwdriver and just move it up and down to try to get that to reseat so the mud doesn't come out there and so that's that's really some of the most important things if you're ever looking for a bazooka and you don't want to buy them just go to your local website search for them uh, Ames rents their tools. Um, uh, there's other companies. I know Chicago area builders, they used to actually rent tools too. But there was probably places where you could rent these tools. When I used to rent these tools, this, this bazooka here was $2 and like $3 a day is what it cost me. But when I had the whole set, and I was using the whole set, it was something like $200, $200 a month is what the entire set was costing me. But truthfully, buying my own tools, and as long as I've owned them, I could have bought probably 15 sets of tools as far as the rental goes, because I use these a lot. And uh, so it wasn't worth it for me to rent them anymore. I can purchase these tools, and, and I was saving myself a lot of money. I've got a bazooka over there that I've had for 15 years or more, and it still works just fine. This one happens to be brand new. Uh, I really like this one. It's it's brand new. It runs really nice. I really like this one. But I'm here because look at behind me. This is Kevlar drywall, and we're about to shoot this with a pellet gun. And later this week, I'm going to try to punch a hole in this with a bullet. So stick around. Hey, I want to thank you for watching. Um, I hope it's educational. I hope you've learned something. Uh, so if you really like what you see, please subscribe.